Hey guys, Blake here again. Hey, tonight on uh, chipping, I want to take you through the process of painting that ornament that I've been working on. Uh, I took a two by two by four inch block, split it on the diagonal, and carved in a Santa face. Uh, on those past episodes, I went through uh, setting up the eyes, doing the beard, uh, actually carving in the hat, uh, everything you need to do to be able to create a good ornament. And tonight I want to take you through the process of painting that ornament. So. Uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about putting bulb linseed on there, how you set up the eyes, um, how you layer the colors and do washes. Um, so stay tuned. Uh, at the end, you'll have this carving right here. Um, and you'll see there how you get all of the different colors and textures on that, uh, that carving. So um, join me tonight. Uh, thanks again for tuning in. Go down and like and subscribe to my page if you would. Uh, so that you can be notified later on about uh, other episodes of Chippin'. Uh, I'll be back soon to do some other projects for you. So uh, stay tuned and we'll go ahead and get to painting this guy. Thank you all. <music>
kind of puddled on. Uh, don't worry about that as much because uh, after you let it sit, then you'll go back in and wipe off the excess. You'll notice on the eyes where I drew those eyes in, uh, you can still see the pencil marks. I'll use those uh, pencil marks kind of kind of like um, highlights to the eyes. I won't worry about carving that off. I'll just leave that on there. Um, and if you look at a person's eyes, it, it kind of acts as the eyelashes um, on the top and the bottom part of the eye. So I like to just leave that on there. So there you see kind of the change in color with the linseed oil. And I'll flip it over and just do the whole back. That way the carving is consistent all the way around. Although I'm not putting any paint on the back, I'll still go ahead and put the linseed oil on there. Kind of acts as a sealer too, so it seals the uh, the wood. And again, it allows that acrylic paint to really uh, give a nice effect when you put it on the carving. So I usually kind of tilt it, make sure that I've hit all the areas. A little bit right there up in that little crease. Uh, a little bit in the beard. Of course, if you're around linseed oil much in carving, you'll hear a lot of people talk about the fact that it's a little dangerous to use. Uh, they say it's combustible um, if you put it on towels or cloths and don't do something to dispose of those cloths. Usually what I'll do is I'll just let it sit for a day or so, and then I'll take a uh, like a bucket of water or I'll just um, throw them in a plastic bag and run water over top of it over top of the uh, the towels and dilute that linseed oil and that way there's no chance of it catching on fire uh, and then I'll just let it sit for a few days and then throw it away some people say they throw it in their fire um, you know this is spring so if you're having uh, bonfires and stuff like that you can always just take it out and throw it in there and that probably would be okay so I'll let that sit for a while um, you'll see here I brought a couple of Santas down um, this is a Santa that I also put linseed oil on. Um, it doesn't give it a real yellow effect, um, but it does help with creating skin tone colors. Uh, here's another one. And then here is a flat Santa that I did. And again, all of these have just the straight linseed oil on them. And that's kind of the effect that I'm going after. Now that linseed oil has sat for a little while on the carving, and you can see there, he's still a little wet, a little puddling on there. All I'm going to do is just take the same paper towel and just wipe off the excess. Just give it a good wipe down. You just don't want a lot of linseed oil uh, sitting on the surface of that carving when you go to paint it. Uh, a little won't hurt. Again, it will uh, kind of blend with the paint so it doesn't hurt it to have it on there. But you just don't want a lot. So I'll go ahead and work on wiping that down and I'll come back here in just a second and we'll get to get to painting this guy all right the linseed oil has been dabbed off he's had some time to sit uh, you can see there he's kind of a golden color uh, this guy's ready to paint so I've cleaned off my palette here I basically use this tray just as a catch-all and to make sure that if something spills or whatever I have something to contain it with um, I've got some paper towels over here. I've got a variety of paintbrushes. Um, 
some flat, some round. Uh, you'll use the round ones for the eyes, the flat ones to put in color and to hit the creases. Uh, and then I just have a uh, cup of water that I'll use just to uh, rinse my brushes off. So to get started on this guy, the first thing I'd like to do, and uh, everybody doesn't do this, but the first thing I'd like to do is to use color uh, to highlight the shadowing in the carving. Um, you know, to create realism, one of the things you want to do is you want to also highlight or accent shadows. So I'm going to use just a uh, burnt sienna uh, to go in and accent those shadows. So the first thing I'll do is go ahead and put a little dab of burnt sienna on my glass. Again, if you saw my other painting video, you'll notice that I use glass to mix my uh, paints and water. Uh, so that I can get the right consistency. So that's that's what I'm going to be using today is just this piece of glass. I uh, apologize for maybe a little bit of uh, reflection in the, uh, the glass from the lights above, uh, but hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing here. Um, so I'll go ahead and take that uh, burnt sienna. I'll dip my paintbrush in the water and just pull some of that out and uh, thin it down. Um, and you really just want the consistency... Um, that you can see through so kind of a transparent stain consistency and all i'm going to do is i'm just going to go in and anywhere where there's a deep area i'm just going to put that burnt sienna in there underneath the mouth underneath the mustache i'll put it in any deep areas where um, there's creases in the beard around the temple area and the cheeks. And again, all you're doing is creating shadows. So you're utilizing the paint, which is the same thing that the old paint would have done if you mix the old paint in with the um, bold linseed oil. It just creates a little bit of a darker area in those deep creases and uh, helps create that shadowing. I'll do it in here next to the nose, in between the eyes. Um, I'll highlight these bags underneath the eyes. Here between the division of the hair and the hat. Uh, in that fold there on the hat and around the ball. So really anywhere where there's a cut that's divided two areas. So this is dividing the hat from the fur. Uh, this is dividing the ball from the hat underneath the ball of the hat. you'll see there kind of how it's created a little bit of shadowing without even putting any color on. Now what that creates is it creates shadow underneath the paint that you put on top of it. And that's the reason why I put it on first. Now I usually like to start when I'm doing a Santa Claus with the hat first. Uh, I'll use red. You have to be careful with the reds because once you clean your brushes in the water, uh, the red paint's still going to be in there and you're taking a chance on getting red in your white beard and in the fur of the hat and stuff like that. Um, so just be careful when you're doing that. Um, I usually just pick a red, whatever red I want to use for the hat. Um, and get me a little, little dab of that. And again, just thin it down with your water. And you just wanted a consistent color, so make sure when you put it on that it's consistent. When you thin down more, make sure it's about the same shade when you thin it down, and that way um, it looks consistent across the board on the whole hat uh, instead of one part being darker than the other part.
And again, I'm using water to thin it down to create a wash. Um, you want to be able to see the wood grain through the or through the paint, through the stain, uh, so that you know it's wood, so that it doesn't look plastic. So um, I use the glass to be able to get the right consistency, and I use the water to thin it down so that I get the right color. The good thing about the linseed oil and the acrylic paint is that if it's too light, you can always come back and add more color. So right now I'll start with that. Again, just going over top of it with the same red. So while that red is drying, I'll go ahead and start prepping the eyes. And to do the eyes, the first thing I put down is a, um, a white, the white of the eyes. Um, and I'm gonna use an antique white for this. Now with the eyes, I do those solid. Um, I won't water that down much other than just wetting the brush. You don't water it down like you would a beard or the fur on the hat, you really want a solid white color. So you'll notice this white that I'm pulling in here is going to be a little thicker. And I use a long skinny brush just to try to get as much detail in there as I can without allowing it to bleed over into the face. So you can see there on the eye how that uh, pencil mark kind of serves as the eyelashes on that top eyelid. And it goes part of the way across the bottom, but not all the way. So there's one. You can tell the difference. So I'll do the same thing on the other side. And the reason I'm doing the white of the eye first is because I want that to dry before I come back in and do uh, the pupil on the eye. So I'll go ahead and put the white on while the red's drying, and then I'll come back to the eyes later. And again, you just want to make sure that you cover all areas um, that's been carved for the eyes. And then I'll let them dry there for a few minutes. So in looking at this, you'll notice that the red on the hat is still kind of light and it's lighter kind of right through here. I'm going to come back in with that red and go over that one more time and maybe not thin down the color quite as much. Again, you just want it to be a stain and not necessarily a thin stain, but you still want to be able to see through the wood and see the wood grain. So just want to make sure that I have good coverage on the whole thing. There we go, that's a little better. So while I have white, I'm gonna use the same white that I used on the eyes to go ahead and do the white on the hat and the ball of the hat. So the fur of the hat and the ball of the hat. And I'm gonna thin this down a little more than I did on the eyeballs. And with white, you gotta put it on a little more liberally so that it doesn't um, wash out. Um, that's the thing with white acrylic paint when you water it down it kind of uh, becomes transparent real quick. 
So you got to make sure that you don't thin it too much so that it still shows white or antique white on the carving. You'll notice if I notice that some of the paint is running, I'll turn the carving over so that it runs away from an area like the face or like the ball of the hat. Um, and usually that'll soak in pretty quick. So uh, that keeps it from running into other areas. So there's that. And I'll go ahead and do the ball of the hat as well. Again, trying to get the same consistency. Uh, imagine if that's a Santa hat and the fur on the front is about the same color as the ball. Uh, you want the same consistency of the white for both parts. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the beard a different white um, so that uh, it doesn't look as though it just flows right into the hat. I want there to be a little bit of discrepancy between the two. So I'll uh, let that dry for a minute and I'll come back with a different white. All right, for the beard and the mustache and the eyebrows, I'm going to use a white just a straight white uh, by ceramic coat. And I'll do the same thing as the fur, but you should be able to see a difference in the colors between the antique white and the regular white. And I'll actually put it right here next to it so you can see the difference. That antique white is just a little more creamy color than the regular white. And I think the antique white gives it a little more dirty look, whereas uh, the regular white is more like a snow white. So again, you don't want to thin the whites down too much. I will thin it down some for the beard and the mustache. And just go over these liberally. Making sure you get it back in all the creases and deep areas of the carving. Going around the mouth here. Another thing, because I let that dry, I can now hold on to the carving up around the fur of the hat um, and it doesn't cause paint to get on my hands which would then transfer over to the carving. So that's another reason I let it dry some. And you can see there how that white is kind of thinning down. Uh, so I may have to come back in and hit it a second time. But again, I would rather do two coats than do one heavy coat and it look plastic looking. So um, I try to put on a thin, thinner coat, see how it looks, and then I can come back and, and put on more. And I just go to that glass and pull in more paint. Again, trying to get a consistent um, color each time that I add water to it so it's the same. And I go right up to the skin using that brush to push that color right up next to uh, the area where the, uh, the hair should stop. Same thing on the other side. And I'll come back in and do the mustache.
And then the same thing with the eyebrows. Um, I'm going to use a wash, but you got to make sure that that doesn't blend down into the face. Um, so it's actually going to be a little heavier wash than what you put on the beard and the mustache. So I'm just going to take this flat brush and I'm just going to brush over top of that where I carved those in there. Same thing on the other side. You'll see how those bushy eyebrows are created there. And you can kind of see now how that linseed oil has made that uh, skin color uh, along with the shading that we did. Um, so I'm liking those results. I'm just going to use the white to come in and touch up a few places that I see. Just get around the mouth. Up next to the mustache. Turn it over and make sure you got all of the creases. Just like that. So to get a little darker red on the hat, sometimes I'll come in with a, um, a more vibrant red. This time I'm going to use a cherry red by Americana and go over that hat again with that. Um, the red that's underneath it plus this cherry red will really give it a good Santa Claus red color. Um, you can find a Santa red at the stores if you want to use that. Um, whatever red you like, uh, this just happens to give a good effect. Um, so I'm going to go in and I'm just going to put a thin layer of that on top of the red already on there. You'll see there how it kind of brightens that red color up a little bit. And I'll do that all over the the hat. You'll see there, it's a little more red. I usually don't put color on the skin uh, to give a skin tone, but I think on this guy I'm going to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of medium flesh and a little bit of adobe red and I'm going to apply that to the face and the mouth and what that does is it allows you to get a little bit of um, a rosy red cheek area uh, and give the face just a little bit of color uh, again you don't have to do that because the linseed oil pretty much takes care of that um, but on this one I think I'm just going to take a little bit of that medium flesh thin it way down and apply it on there just so it has a little bit of paint color and again you don't have to be heavy-handed with this medium flesh you just want a slight tint of color on there I'll put it on the mouth and then I'm going to come back with this little bit of adobe red Kind of make a rouge and i'm just going to put it on the cheek area just to kind of lighten that up kind of looks like santa's been out in the in the snow i run it across his nose put some down here on the lip and maybe out on the temple area just a little bit that just adds a little bit of color to his face And the next thing I'll do, I'm going to look over the carving. You can see there where the white has kind of dried a little bit. It's kind of looking um, pretty washed out. So I'm going to go back over that with white. Just to make sure 
um, that that white is really a white and it looks like a beard. Again, sometimes those whitewashes kind of get washed out once that paint sinks down in there and dries. Just gonna go back over it real quick, just hit some spots. And what I'll do at the end is I'm gonna come back in and dry brush um, the beard and that will highlight a lot of these creases and crevices and really give it a nice effect. And I believe I'll hit those eyebrows just one more time. A little thicker paint. Just like that. So the next thing I'll do is I'm gonna come back in and paint the eyes in. So we'll let that dry for a minute and I'll be right back. Okay, for the eyes, what I like to do, because it's a Santa Claus and he's been out in the cold, um, and just I guess the way I imagine Santa is, um, I like to use dark grays and light grays or like a winter blue uh, for the eyes. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a French gray um, and come in and start the eyeballs. And this is going to be solid paint. I don't water down the eyes at all. I use kind of a thin brush and I just come in and paint a half oval and I'll paint the whole half it's really a half circle And the challenge with the eyes is always to make sure that the other side matches up. So once I have that where I want it, I'll come on the other side and try to match it. So that he's looking straight ahead instead of um, eyes looking in different directions. And now's the time to really set that when you're putting your base coat on. You can really make sure that those eyes are where you want them to be. Again, being careful not to go outside of the eye when you're painting it. You definitely don't want paint to bleed over into other areas of the carving on the eyes. So if you give it a look there, this one may be a tad bigger, so I'll add more paint to the other side. Again, just trying to match them up. One thing I've learned that is if you do get paint somewhere that you don't want it, you can always use your knife and go back and kind of skim that off there. So once I have those there, this is the part that takes a little while. You have to let that dry before you come back in. You put another color on top of it. Um, so I'll let that dry for a bit and then I'll come back and use the lighter color over top uh, for the pupil area. So I'll be right back. Okay, now that that's had time to dry, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in with a winter blue, just a lighter color blue, and I'm going to fill in the middle part of that eyeball um, to represent the, um, the iris. 
of the eye. After I do that and let it dry, then I'll come back in with the black and put that in the very middle. So if you notice there, that darker gray is now kind of that darker ring that you see around the uh, around the outside of the eyeball. A lot of times it's black. You can draw it in with a micron pen. You can paint it in with a black paint, or you can just use like a darker paint, which is what I chose to do on this one. I think this kind of gives it a cool effect. It kind of looks, um, I don't know, kind of wintry and cold. A little bit, um, a little bit transparent color. Kind of a blue gray. So once again, we'll let that dry and we'll come back in with the black and I'll finish up the eyes. Okay, now that that light blue has had a chance to dry, I'm going to come back in with the black. And I'm going to put in the black um, of the center of the eye. And it'll really be the center of the top. And you want to be able to still see that lighter blue color and the darker blue color. So you just want to be careful just to get it right in the middle. Like that. And then while that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and take a little dot of white. And, you know, Santa has a little twinkle in his eye. So I'll just put just a little, a little white highlight just in the very side depending on which side you want the light coming from to give him that little bit of twinkle just taking a little dot, dot of white placing it on there about in the same place on both eyes And there you'll see the eyes are done. Now usually what I'll do is I'll go back and look over the carving, see if there's anything that I feel like that I've missed, anything that needs more color. Um, I can see that there's a little bit of red there that needs to be touched up. The paint on my palette is still wet, so I'll just go in with a brush, pull some of that red out, water it down. And just go back and touch that up. And there you go. There's your Santa Claus. Um, as you can see on this one, you can always do all kinds of things with the hat. Uh, I had my daughter actually paint a scene on this one. Um, just to give it a little more... Um, uniqueness uh, as you can see I used a blue to be able to accent that ball to kind of match the fur of the hat um, you can paint the hat a different color so you can paint it blue like I did on this one um, again it's really whatever you prefer uh, the last thing I want to do is I want to use the white and do a little dry brushing on the beard uh, what that'll do is it'll just, you know, when somebody's beard's turning white, uh, it'll look kind of dirty and dingy underneath, and then you'll have some bright white hair on the outside. So I'm just going to use a rough brush. Uh, you can tell there that that's been dabbed in paint a lot and just kind of 
uh, brushed off. Use that same piece of glass with the regular white. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some of that white on there and I'm gonna dab as much of it off as I can. And then I'm just gonna hit the high peaks with what's left in the brush. And again, my brush is dry, the paint is solid. And that's the reason they call it dry brushing is you just dry brush it on there, but you don't want a lot. So once you dab it off, you just kind of go back and forth over top of the highlights or on top of the creases and get the highlights put in there. Make sure you have enough paint in your brush so that you can see it. And that's really more an accent than a dry brush, but um, it'll allow the peaks to have more white, more solid white, and the underneath to kind of be that dirty, dingy color. So again, I'm going to cross uh, all of those peaks. So on the side, I'll kind of go up because that hair is flowing down. Across the front, I'll go across instead of up and down. Just giving it a little bit of white color. Same thing on this side, I'll kind of go up and down instead of across. A and then I'll do the mustache also. And that just causes some accents in that hair that brightens it up and again offsets it uh, from the fur on the hat so it looks a little different. So there you go. Had a lot of questions about uh, how I paint my Santa Clauses. Again, you can mix it up a lot. You can add uh, holly on here. You can paint it different colors. Um, you can really use other colors for the beard. I've used yellow. I've used um, kind of a yellow undertone with white on top. Uh, it's really just whatever you want to do. As far as the colors in the face, uh, you can use oranges. You can use blues. I usually just use that medium flesh. Um, because the highlights and the bold linseed oil kind of gives it the color that I want it to have. Um, but really, it's your carving, so just play around with it. Decide how you want it to look. Um, try new things and uh, see what you think. Um, I hope this video has been beneficial to you all. Uh, if you have any questions about what I've done or uh, different things that you can do, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe to my channel and uh, tune back in. And we'll be doing more videos on chipping. So thank you all for joining me today. And I'll see you all soon on the YouTube. Thank you. You got me straight